Emergency. A plane just crashed. Where? Um, I'm right off the power line heading towards commercial. I can, I saw it going down. I'm on one. What's your emergency? I just heard the, the big crash and, and I see the clouds of, well, I think there's cops on here. Do you see right smoke? Now. Yeah, a lot of smoke, ma'am. It's pretty much burned. I'm on There is a woman out here on the street. That help started that way. Um, you said that they're there, but there's not enough people, correct? Yes, she is we are severely on. burned. She will probably die soon if we don't we get any help. We are working on getting additional ambulances to you. Are you close <laughs> enough, please? Oh, I need yeah. to get out of the way. Be careful, okay? It's exploding. I need to get out of the way. It's exploding? It's exploding, ma'am. Leave a message after the tone. Hey, Jen. Uh, it's your dad. Uh, we're just about to leave the airport, let you know when we land, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. If there was some finality or something to what caused this that might help us, they lost some really wonderful people. I worked for the NTSB for 22 years. I got a master's degree in aviation technology and accident investigation. And this led me to work for the National Transportation Safety Board. It may seem a little weird, but I've always been interested in mechanical failures. What happened was, the aircraft suffered an explosive decompression from an improperly repaired aft pressure bulkhead. And what that did, it failed. <laughs> causing the loss of the vertical stabilizer, most of it, and severing all of the hydraulic lines, thus rendering the plane uncontrollable. My name is Whitney Adams. I'm 38 years old. I lost my ex-husband in the crash. My brother was an amazing man. He was so full of life and he would always just, I mean, when people say, oh, they just light up a room, he really lit up a room, really. I haven't been here in at least 10 years. I'm not going, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, because I don't talk about it much. I was one of the doctors in the ER at the time of the crash. Then, I was forced to quit shortly thereafter because the hospital board thought I had extreme emotional trauma. I didn't really know my mom, to be honest with you. She was a flight attendant, so I rarely saw her. I worked as an EMT in the Owlset area for about 10 years. I loved it. it. It was, I mean, obviously it takes its toll on you, but you know that going in. Every EMT knows that. That's why you get in it. I was in Canada with my parents. We took a trip up there but my aunt, uncle, cousins, and brother were in Florida at the same time. So we found out about two days later and we rushed home. All right. Okay, so a few months before my sister's 18th birthday, she kept talking about wanting to go to Portland, going out to eat, you know, getting a limo, walking around with all of her friends, all that sort of stuff. And so, you know, the time keeps getting closer and closer and my parents keep saying, Ellie, you know, we've got to get the limo. We've got to get one. She keeps saying, yeah, yeah, no, I've got it. Just give me a few minutes. Nah, so basically my grandparents die in the crash and I'm devastated for years. And two years ago, like my dad gets killed in a random fucking carjacking. 
So every so often someone I love or someone really fucking close to me gets killed in some random fucking shit. It's like a plane crash and a carjacking. What kind of shit is that? That you won't have anyone else like me in this movie of yours. You can bet on that. I've just been really bored. I mean, honestly. But because my former co-workers and friends, well, when they retired, it was all this very, hey, this is the best, I've never been happier, kind of bullshit. Dad was an asshole. To be honest, I get this is supposed to commemorate or whatever, but he was an abusive dickhead who treated us like shit until he died. So yeah, dead as parole. He was a piece of shit. And I don't miss him. Am I going too fast? I, I feel like I'm doing a PSA or something. I've never done this before. This is my first documentary. No, I'm not going to disclose my age. I just hope you're making me look good in this. Hi, I'm Terry. I started a Facebook group for everyone who's involved or knew someone. It's just a nice way to keep in touch with people who are going through the same thing as you. And it's helpful, I suppose. So anyway, when you do that, you use a heat gun to seal the wrap. Again, it's like a lighter on cellophane. So there we were, 20, 25 of us, shrink wrapping away with our heat guns and whatnot. And maybe two or three football fields away. I found out like three days after the crash that my husband at the time had this whole entire other family behind my back while we were married. He had a fucking other wife and two other kids and a fucking dog. The whole fucking time. Two years together, two years married. He hid it for four years. I was absolutely devastated. I mean, I absolutely... <laughs> Sorry. Well, I'm not even going to try to imitate it because, because I'll cry, so... I can kind of feel him and hear him every now and then. Stop it, Vaughn! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just not feeling comfortable with this. I thought I wanted to be a part of it and talk about them, but I just don't like it. But we've lost some people, obviously, over the years. Um, sometimes you know why, sometimes you don't. But people go through things differently. And I started to realize that I can't help everyone, even though I wish I could. I think that was better, that was but that's that going to be up to you. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, I mean, out of nowhere, like you're looking at a mirage or something, this huge airliner, out of nowhere, Maybe it's survivor's guilt. Maybe it's normal from something like this. Who knows? I'm 63 years old. It's been 12 years. And I still can't fall asleep at night. Owl's Head, you don't really get much. You get your senior citizens who have fallen, your occasional broken bones from a fight, that kind of stuff. Lots of ODs though. I did more overdoses that decade than I did anything else. Hey, this is Erin Hollis calling. I don't want you guys putting me in your movie. I don't need to be reliving shit that my grandparents wasted thousands of dollars on to make me get over. Don't call me again, please and thank you. So, uh, I started driving at the big van there for the nursing homes. Volunteer driving, well, sort of. I mean, uh, I get paid, but it's more a matter of just something to do, really. His wife came to my house while the kid was home and told us both three days after. 
I think about it at least once or twice a week. It used to be every day. Anything would remind me of them. A song, a color, a vehicle, anything and everything. It's a long, slow, grating process, but you eventually climb a hill. You're not at the top yet, but it's almost there. Look at me, mommy. My name is Alice Reeves and I'm 42 years old, and I live in Scarborough, Maine. I lost my son, Tom, and my husband, Tro I mean, I lost my husband, Tom, and my son, Troy, in a plane crash as they're home, heading home from Florida after a fishing trip. They crashed miles away from Rockland, Maine. Comes crashing down behind this whole row of trees. I mean, you felt the impact. You felt the heat. The heat was, my God, and we were still quite a ways away, and... I retired last year, but I probably should have left sooner. You can do all that you can with all that you have and all that you know. And some folks will take it and get on with their lives. And others will take it and push it far away for a long time. And at some point, you just have to let them go. We can't get a limo. And she says, well, actually I actually have thought about it. I actually just want to stay home and eat pizza with you guys. I mean, that was really surprising. I mean, what sort of 18-year-old wants to stay at home and eat pizza with her family? I probably, I, I'm probably not going to delve too much into it, but I remember we didn't have enough ambulances for everyone. I remember we stacked five bodies in one ambulance just to get them out of there. The last thing I remember about her, she was wasted, she fell asleep in my bed, and she pissed everywhere. That's my last memory. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> no, this isn't, uh, this is, um, we moved about two years after the, after the crash. Yeah, we had to get out of there. A lot of memories. Good memories. Um, but, yeah, it was just too much. This is much nicer. Uh, <laughs> um, it, there's no basement, <laughs> which is wonderful. Um, yeah, no flooding. The other place, oh, it was ridiculous. <sighs> Every spring, anytime it rained, <laughs> hmm, the melt off, it was just, I, I remember Marty, one year, kittens were born down there, and um, and he just thought I could do anything, and so he was like, "Mom, you have to go and save the kittens," and I almost drowned myself. Frankly, <laughs> I didn't let him know that. But oh, that fucking sump pump. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So.
Yeah, the whole place was... Oh gosh, that time the power went out. Yeah, the power, the power went out. I hope this is okay out here. I'm not boring you. Um, the power went out and, uh, and everything, everything, there, the basement was flooded, the sump pump wasn't working, and the lights all went off, and the alarms went off, the food went bad. We came home and there was like cat litter floating through the living room. <laughs> it was, ah. But you know when you're a mom, you, uh, yeah, yeah, you make, you know, you make everything an adventure. <laughs> you know, that's how I wanted Marty to, to live his life. Like everything was an adventure.